Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the Ampersand blog. Today I'm going to be talking about comics and graphic novels. The first book is Castro. This is published by Arsenal Pulp Press and it is a biography of Fidel Castro. It was first published in Germany and then again in the UK. Um, and he previously did a book about Johnny Cash. So he's quite well known for his narrative works. This is a real warts and all biography. It begins when Castro is a young revolutionary and goes all the way up until the end of his life. It also has an introduction by one of the world's leading experts on Fidel Castro. After that is Sweet Francaise, Storm in June. This is a graphic novel adaptation of the best-selling publishing sensation that came out in 2004. I'll also remind you that a movie did come out this past fall starring Kirsten Scott Thomas. It's a really great look at um, France just as it was entering World War II. The next book is a children's title. Anna and Fraga is the latest in a series of books about these two characters who are quite funny. The age range for the books is six to nine. Um, it, and the series has, written, has received really fantastic reviews from librarians and critics alike. Then we have Blankets. You may know this book because it was actually originally published in 2003 by Top Shelf, but John Corley has bought the rights now. It's sold over 250,000 copies, has been reviewed pretty much everywhere, and won quite a few awards. It's been translated into 15 languages and it actually has been adopted for quite a few university level courses. This is a story of first love, about finding your creative voice, and about a complicated relationship with Christianity. So it's great for the YA market. Then we have Killing and Dying. This is Adrian Tomine, and it's his first graphic novel-sized collection since Shortcomings. Two 2015 was also the 20th anniversary of his Optic Nerve, which was quite beloved and nominated for an Eisner Award. Um, and this book itself is six interconnected stories, each drawn in a different style. It's also his funniest work yet. Then we have Melody, Story of a Nude Dancer. This is another book that's been previously published, although it was self-published in the 1980s. This is an autobiographical look um, at a woman who, was, uh, who worked at strip clubs when she was young. It's one of the very first indie autobiographical comics, and really the great comparison for this one is Julie Doucette's New York Diary. <coughs> then we have Shoah, 1953 to 1989. This is the fourth and final volume in the Shoah series, which is a memoir dealing with the author's experiences starting before World War II and going right until the 80s. This book is obviously after World War II, and it deals with the author's struggles to become a cartoonist, which, spoiler alert, he succeeded, um, despite actually having lost an arm in World War II. Then we have Step Aside Pops. This is the follow-up to Hark a Vagrant, which is Drawn and Quarterly's best-selling book of all time. Uh, it was on the New York Times bestseller list for months. This is all new, previously unserialized content. Um, so get your fill of weird historical cartoons and um, other great lady comics. Then there's Super Mutant Ninja Academy. This is Jillian Tamaki, and, um, who's Canadian, although I believe she lives in the US these days. She is the illustrator of the New York Times bestselling and GG award winning This One Summer. She's also the illustrator of Skim. This is a collection of her online comic strips, um, and there will be quite a bit of new previously unpublished material. So great for any Tamaki completists. The Arab of the Future, this is a really eye-opening and gripping portrait of a childhood in Libya and Syria. The comp for this one is obviously Persepolis, and the book itself has previously been published in France and spent months on the bestseller list there and actually knocked off capital. Um, so it should be very interesting and obviously very topical. Then we have the Best American Comics 2015. So um, this one, I really just wanted to quote Publishers Weekly because it's just such a phenomenal quote. This volume encompasses heartfelt memoir, 
historical fiction, experiments in nonlinear storytelling, and beyond. This is a strong assemblage of work showcasing a variety of voices. Anyone interested in the far-ranging possibilities of the comics medium could do well to pick up a copy. So that pretty much speaks for itself, I would say. Then we have The Outside Circle. This book was actually started as the author's PhD thesis. She has a PhD in sociology and was studying the very high incarceration rates of First Nations men in Canada. Um, so this is a sort of fictionalized account of a young man who gets involved in gang violence, ends up in prison, but is lucky enough to um, end up dealing with a First Nations healing circle. So it's really about the transformation that these kinds of healing programs can affect and how that changed this young man's life. Um, it does look at a lot of the systemic problems in Canada with racism, um, but it's a really hopeful book without being a sort of bootstrap kind of a book. Then finally we have Rosalie Lightning. This is a graphic memoir. Um, the author's daughter died when she was quite young, so it's a story about losing a child, about the grieving process, and about how to go on with life after that has happened. The author is an Eisner Award nominated cartoonist, and the book has gotten some pretty fantastic reviews so far. So that's it for episode eight of our Ampersand vlog. I hope you enjoyed it.